Welcome back to Made in Northern New York. I'm Alex Hazard, and we appreciate you sticking with us tonight. If you missed any of tonight's segments, go to our website, informny.com. By this time in the special, you might be a little hungry, so let's head to Alexandria Bay for something to eat. You know, let's face it, school cafeterias don't always have a reputation for the best food. I made them extra sloppy, boys. <laughs> But one local school's menu is looking less like that of a cafeteria and more like one of a restaurant. This is Chris Clapper, the superintendent of Alexandria Bay Central School. He told us a few years ago they identified two problems common in schools, yet troubling. We had some, some uh, barriers for, for kids uh, in the district. Um, one of them was that, that kids had to pay for lunch and for breakfast, and so that uh, sort of diminished the number of kids that that would have purchased food here. Um, the second issue was the quality of the food that we were serving. They formed a committee to solve these problems, almost immediately stopped charging for breakfast and for lunch, and came up with this common theme and goal. To have an understanding of where food comes from, what that food was, and, and uh, what it tastes like, and, and to have the courage to try different food, and to be conscious of nutrition. That message spread through the folks making the food, I was born on a, raised on a farm, and I know the importance of knowing where your food comes from. To administrators. And how do we teach them about the right things to eat so they're getting their full balanced meal? And most importantly, to the kids. It's just better, better quality. And... This is Crystal, the school's cook. She makes the food for the students the same way she cooks for her five kids at home. I basically cook like I'm at home. From the spices she cooks with at home. I like to use a little everything because garlic always tastes good in anything you put it in. Home style favorites. Wednesday I'm making lasagna, so I'm making it the way I would make it at home. I'm making fresh sausage, crumbling up, hamburger, uh, fresh vegetables, good sauce, a nice, a nice ricotta, and we're just going to bake it up for these kids and they're going to love it. To getting creative and encouraging the kids to maybe try something they've never tried before. We have Spanish rice, we're trying to go outside the box, we do stir fries, I have the huge wok, so big I have to step on a step stool. No kidding. I have to sit on this, you know, and... Since the changes, the school now makes sure that all the ingredients are fresh and often even local. Some local sources, and we're, we're sourcing our own meat here from, from local vendors instead of using... Uh, distributors that are sort of you know nationwide distributors and sometimes really really local like from down the hall local we actually have some grow racks here at school so kids are you know growing tomatoes and lettuce and basil and so they're seeing what they're growing go into the cafeteria and being part of what they're eating so that's exciting for them so i think that gives them more um invested interest as you can imagine Getting kids to have an invested interest in healthier eating can be difficult, but maybe easier with dishes that just about every kid on planet Earth can agree on. Um, it's sort of a stereotype, but we know that kids like chicken nuggets. But the chicken nuggets that, that you, you buy processed and frozen simply aren't good for you. Wait, did he just say chicken nuggets? Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Time to head to the kitchen. One of the most popular dishes here at the school are the chicken nuggets. Everybody's talked about them, and we're going to learn how to make them here, right? Yes, we are. From her famous flair for spices. And you were telling me before that you like to put all sorts of different spices in here, and the kids actually like it. Yes, they do. I mean, it, it doesn't matter. It just as long as um, something that you would eat, you want to put in there, because then the kids develop that flavor and will want it some more. The egg. Yeah, lard her up. All right. We have to do a lot of kids, so we just load it up. <laughs> <laughs> to her healthier option for breadcrumbs, panko. You know, you know what to do. <laughs> I've seen you cook before. <laughs> and then you just want to lay it on your pan. All right. And it's really that easy. It is really, th literally that easy. I mean, the hardest part is cutting all the chicken. And I try to do that the day before. And I cover them up the next day is when I do all my breading so it's nice and fresh still. And then we just stick it in the oven. Easy enough. Easy enough. All right. I mean, we don't want to make it seem like it's that easy. Yeah. I mean, it's a lot of work. <laughs> no, yeah, yeah. With all that hard work, healthier ingredients, and things locally sourced, it's 
got to be pretty pricey for a school, right? I really haven't seen too much of a difference in the cost at all um, between frozen processed food and buying uh, pizza dough, fresh pizza dough, making it from scratch. Um, and I think that's probably a, a pretty common idea with people that it's, health, it's more expensive to eat healthier and it's not. Okay, so it's cost effective. So is McDonald's, but how does it taste? Tell you already, it smells really good. And you have this homemade chipotle, chipotle. sauce. Tell me about this. That is um, fresh abado, adabo, um, peppers, mm -hmm. blended with um, some mayonnaise, ranch, garlic, and mm. a little lemon juice. It's really good. And it's served here with the Spanish rice. Healthy and nutritious. It is. And considering they're a school, they're Principal says there's one more benefit that's really important. Which we are seeing um, a dramatic difference as far as our success and growth in academics as well. So, but Don't take our word for it. The school's got their version of an in-house Yelp rating. They do a survey and the kids comment on their foods that they have for lunch and the positive feedback has been remarkable. And even parents in the community have commented on how much they see the changes and you know that makes it worthwhile because we are here for the kids and we want to make the kids know that there's more options out there than a frozen chicken nugget or a frozen pizza. And aside from getting to rate the food they've already tried, they also get a say on new things added to the school menu. The second thing we did is started to taste test food in our cafeterias um, so that we could cater our food towards what kids wanted. So how's that work? Can you ever imagine a kid picking veggies over pizza or a burger? A couple weeks ago, the kids tried the Impossible Burger. And I, when I went around and served some of the samples to the kids at the upper grade levels, I did not necessarily tell them what an Impossible Burger is, but just that they were trying an Impossible Burger and they loved it. And then afterwards, we had some good discussion about what an Impossible Burger was and they were blown away that they were eating this plant-based burger. And, you know, it was a good, good opportunity for us to, you know, talk about trying things and going out of your comfort zone because you might like it. That's the best part. The kids do like it. And I have to say, I did too. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> we'll be right back with more Made in Northern New York after this.